Antoine Lotkus, I will talk about the work we did with Andre Shivka, Shin Lunu, Umutim Shekli, Song Yang, and Gail Richard about relative positional encoding for transformers with linear complexity. So it's a French Taiwanese collaboration we did last year. So to start with, I will shortly present the transformer models just in a few minutes uh, for those that are not used to it. So let's assume for simplicity that we have a sequence of length n and we want to produce some other, some sequence, some output of the same length. So the transformer, when it was proposed in 2017 in the attention is all unit paper, uh, introduces the concept of a attention matrix. So it's a n times n matrix and for each output, it gives the importance basically of each input to compute this uh, output. So if an entry is close to zero, then it means that the, this input should basically be ignored to compute that output. And on the contrary, if that entry is much bigger than zero, then it means that this input is important to compute that output. So um, let's assume for now that we have this attention matrix, we'll see how we compute it later. How do we use it? So what, what we do is that we start to apply some linear transform, some simple transform, token-wise transform. So on each token, we apply some, <coughs> some transformation and we get what we call the values. And then it's pretty simple to compute the output sequence. So for each output, we will average all the values weighted by the attention coefficient. So uh, the output is just a simple average of the values weighted by the attention coefficients. So now how do we compute this attention matrix? The way we do it is that from the input, we compute features, output features that we call queries and input features that we call keys. For each of the sequence tokens, we compute a query and a key. And the attention matrix is simply computed <coughs> as a pairwise comparison of all the queries and the keys in a deterministic manner. So we have parameters to compute these features, these queries, these keys, and the values, but then all the rest flows uh, uh, deterministically. We just compare those queries and keys, and then when it's done, uh, we weight the values and we get the output. So how do we compare queries and keys? Basically, uh, we do it uh, very simply through uh, computing a correlation that's called dot product attention. So each entry of the uh, attention matrix is obtained as a correlation of the corresponding query and key. Then we have some additional exponentiation just to promote sparsity. And that's it. Uh, <coughs> what we are missing here is how we compute those features, those queries and keys. So a simple way is just to have the tokens go through a linear transform. So we have three li linear transform. The first one, so each token, uh, we compute the corresponding query, so through some linear module. Then uh, the uh, corresponding key and the corresponding value. So these uh, are the parameters. And then all the rest flows. So uh, uh, we compute, uh, we multiply queries and keys with dot product attention. We have this exponentiation. We get the attention matrix. And then we compute the, uh, the output by multiplying by the values. So parameters pertain to how we get these features. And this is what we train through uh, gradient descent. So this is it. This is the transformer encoder. Of course, uh, in reality, <coughs> it's a bit more complicated with uh, several heads, uh, um, normalizations, uh, skip connections, etc. But that's the main thing I want to talk about. Now, um, the linear transformers. There is a big issue with the transformers, as I presented, which is scalability. So as I said, the attention matrix is a n times n matrix. It means that if you feed a 20,000 length sequence to uh, the transformer, the attention matrix will need to be 20,000 times 20,000 matrix. So <coughs> sometimes this doesn't fit into memory, um, especially if you have many layers. So uh, that's uh, a known issue of transformers and uh, many people have worked on workarounds. Uh, um, and uh, last year in particular, there were many proposed methods even before. So um, 
we can mention linear transformers, lambda networks, and uh, the recently proposed uh, performers that we liked very much. So all of these methods can be understood from our perspective uh, as basically demonstrating that this attention matrix, this very big attention matrix, can be factorized. So uh, the way it's done is that you apply some function to the queries and to the keys, and then you know that uh, the attention matrix will be correctly uh, uh, approximated as the product of those modified queries and keys, basically. So uh, it's not so important to know how it works, but it's not super complicated to use. But this has very strong practical uh, implications that I want to emphasize here. So when it's time to compute the output, so when you want to multiply your attention matrix by the values, before you had a quadratic complexity, well, uh, um, because the attention matrix is so big, <clears throat> and so here, what you are going to do is to just replace this attention matrix by its approximation so uh, that you can do the multiplication from the right. And when you do this, actually, uh, you get to a linear complexity, which is super nice because you never have to store or to compute this very big attention matrix. And so you can scale to uh, very long sequences. And this is a pretty recent fact. And uh, this is stimulating a lot of research for transformers outside uh, uh, scenarios where you have um, small sequences, short sequences. So this is the first fact. The second thing I want to talk about is positional encoding. So um, if we just do uh, as I said, so we take each input and we apply some linear transformation uh, to get the queries, the keys, and the values. We realize that uh, all of these features uh, uh, are just computed from the content uh, of each token, and we are totally ignoring the positions of each token. And uh, it means that if we did shuffle the input randomly, uh, uh, the, the, the output would be the same uh, up to this permutation. So it's, uh, um, it's a bit weird because uh, the fact is we would expect to actually take the positions into account for computation. So think of a CNN. We know that each output should be computed using the neighborhood, for instance. So the idea uh, to fix this is to make the positions part of the features or at least part of the attention matrix. So the a classical way to do it uh, in the initial paper is just to add some information to the origin to the initial input. So what you do is that for each token, for you add some vector which is computed from the position only. So for the nth token, you add a positional encoding that depends on n. And this is called a absolute positional encoding. And so you add information to the inputs. And this way you know that uh, uh, the, the signal that is processed to compute the queries and keys contains information both from the content, the actual token, but also from the, its position. And um, that's the classical way to do it. Now, the year after, there was another method that was proposed that is called relative positional encoding. And in this alternative method, so you just do uh, 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 normally, so you take the input, you compute queries and keys and the attention, but then you go and modify the attention matrix. And the way you do it is uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, to put more emphasis depending on time lag. So for instance, if you know that this output should pay more attention to uh, uh, output nearby, you are going to add uh, this information to the attention matrix directly. And uh, uh, this method has uh, enjoyed a lot of success because um, uh, it was observed empirically that the distance between tokens is sometimes more important than their absolute positions. And uh, uh, the fact is that to use it, you need to compute explicitly the attention matrix. So. Um, um, that's it. And uh, if you want to write the math about this, so this model by Shaw and et al. Uh, in uh, 2018, so uh, uh, the way it's done is that the attention is the sum of the query keys dot product plus uh, 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 the sum of a few terms that are 
a shift invariant kernels that you are training, this PD, activated by the queries. So in our paper, we are slightly generalizing this to uh, uh, um, <coughs> another formulation where these shift invariant kernels, these tuplets matrices uh, that are dependent on M minus N, uh, they are activated by both queries and keys. And, and you can actually uh, uh, show that this um, generalizes the initial model uh, when you keep some entries equal to one, for instance. So this is the model uh, uh, we are considering for attention. And now, so this is some background. What are we proposing? We are proposing stochastic positional encoding. And what is our main motivation is to put these two big ideas together. So first, there is this linear transformer uh, that allows to do inference linearly with a, a dot product attention, this QK thing and relative positional encoding, that is uh, <coughs> this method that behaves super well for generalization that takes the lags into account. And to this day, there was no method to do relative positional encoding for linear transformers. And why? It's because relative positional encoding was always done by modifying the attention matrix. So it always required to write the attention matrix down. And this is what uh, uh, we are trying to fix here. And this is the, 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 the purpose of this paper. And how we do that is simply to uh, transform our intention matrix to express it as uh, in classical dot product attention. So we will create new keys and queries, uh, modified qu queries and keys that lead to this attention pattern. And um, to do this, there is this very simple classical fact is that any positive definite tuplets matrix, like these uh, uh, patterns we want to enforce, this uh, uh, PD <coughs> M minus N, so that depends on the lag difference between queries and keys, between positions, any matrix like this is actually the covariance matrix of a white sense stationary process. So um, a, 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 it's a fact that has been known since the 40s and has been used by people like Kolmogorov, Dub, or Wiener, is uh, um, that it's actually the definition of a white sense stationary process that uh, its autocorrelation, uh, autocovariance matrix is tuplet. So what this means and what we do is we just draw R and dependent realizations of some stationary process, which has some prescribed uh, uh, um, autocorrelation uh, uh, structure. And uh, uh, we, we, we know that if R is big enough, then its auto its autocovariance matrix is going to be tuplets with the prescribed structure. So we are basically done. Uh, uh, it's pretty simple. We start from this model where we have this tuplets matrix activated by queries and keys, and we just replace <coughs> this tuplets matrix as an empirical estimate of, uh, 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 of uh, the autocovariance between R different uh, realizations of the same process. So this is why we have a random positional encoding uh, and stationary positional encoding. So the big idea is that we don't really care about positional encoding. What we do care about is about the fact that we get the right attention coefficient. And in relative positional encoding, it turns out that uh, 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 this means we can take stationary positional encoding, random stationary positional encoding. And then we have this big sum. We can very simply rearrange them so we can express it as a product of two sums. And the cross terms actually disappear because uh, these realizations uh, are independent. They are drawn randomly. And so actually, we get back to this initial, uh, 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 to our objective, which is to transform, to modify the queries and keys <coughs> So that uh, we uh, uh, we we obtain the the, the 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 desired model in the attention domain, and we write it uh, as a product of 
uh, classical dot product attention between modified queries and keys. And when we are there, we can simply use linear transformers, uh, each one we like better, with these modified queries and keys. And so that's it. Uh, uh, we have an, uh, we have queries, keys. We have our uh, um, uh, PD parameters, the, the, the uh, shift and variant templates, and we modify the queries and keys. We produce new queries and keys that we can use with linear transformers. And this is the stochastic positional embedding method that we described in the paper. So we did many experiments. You can uh, uh, try it. So it's uh, um, uh, the model, the, 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 the code is available uh, on PyTorch and JAX. So um, uh, for instance, we did experiments for generating symbolic MIDI from scratch. And uh, we generate music after training. And the interesting part is when we get to the training sequence length, which is 2000 here, the classical positional encoding, which is in blue here, starts to degrade rapidly. This is a known uh, problem, is that when you get to sequence lengths that are not seen during training, it starts to degrade. Whereas relative positional encoding, or the, the other curves here, behaves better. So this was expected because it's a feature of relative positional encoding, but this was a it was not available for very long sequences before. So to summarize, uh, we propose relative positional encoding for transformers with linear complexity. And in the paper, you have much more content. So you, we allow for arbitrary templates, not just positive definite ones. We have two variants. One is vanishing uh, with a convolu convolution of noise, while is non-vanishing with sinusoids. We have a gating mechanism also to ignore positions. And we have much more experiments. So as a follow-up, we could imagine an uh, uh, alternative to dot product attention, uh, just factorizable positional encoding or signal-dependent positional encoding. Thank you very much.